Pokemon Ultimate Adventures by Mike Azuki. Ash, Misty, and Tracy left, dragging the unconscious Epi and Brock. As they walked off in their own direction, a lone figure covered in a dark blue cloak stepped forwards, his face covered by his hood. Sir, where exactly would this fire-breathing clan be? I'm sorry, I really don't know their location, but I'm sure it's quite close. Thank you, sir, he said and sighed. <sighs> I overheard you say something about them being merciless to anyone who are of the water element, and that sickens me. He crossed his arms. And if anyone even threatens Misty, I swear I'm gonna... Don't tell me you're planning on fighting them, the nomad said. You're a water trader, yes? I could tell by the tone, but those guys are mad. If they saw you... Maybe I'll go looking for them. Maybe I won't. We'll see, said the hooded teenager. But those guys need to be taught a lesson. I don't have anything against fire types... But there's just something about supremacy clans run by clowns dressed in ridiculous costumes and pointy hats that brings out the worst in me. Um, the nomad blinked. Anyone who uses violence to force their beliefs and persecution onto others are the lowest of human beings, and these kinds of people just need to be stepped on. He shook his head. Anyway, I just had a run-in with a few of them not too long ago, and they weren't so tough. Mm hmm? He looked up at a sand dune. What? The cheerful nomad wasn't so cheerful anymore. He looked up at the same sand dunes and saw several figures emerge. Lots of them were fat and wore pointy clown hats. Get! I'm out of here! He yelped and ran off. There he is! A bruised, beaten fire breather with a partially torn outfit pointed at the cloaked stranger. That's the guy who attacked us and beat us up, he said. More fire breathers emerged from the sand dunes in every direction. Him? said the tallest, largest, fattest fire breather, who was evidently the leader. That little kid beat you two up? You told me he was huge! We stand corrected! Now just settle the score with him! said a second, badly beaten fire trainer, wearing broken sunglasses and a broken pointy hat. As I recall, I was attacked by you guys for no reason, said the hooded stranger. They saw you handling water Pokemon, and that's reason enough! The leader pointed down at him. You are not welcome here! Maybe so, but I have business here to take care of, said the stranger. No! Oh so you're gonna fight us, huh? He started laughing, as did the rest of them. You see, I don't care who started the fight, but I'm not gonna let some snotty water type trainer insult my crew and get away with it! He growled. I own this desert, and I decide what goes! And the first thing to go here is you! After we're done with you, that is! He chuckled, while the others started laughing, cracking their knuckles, or reaching for their Pokeballs. Hmm. <laughs> How pathetic, claiming you own this desert, and you even have the nerve to attack people. The hooded stranger looked around. I get the feeling there's no talking you out of this, since you came here looking for a fight, he scoffed. I feel sorry for fire-type trainers everywhere. It must be so embarrassing to be represented by a bunch of fat men running around the middle of a desert dressed in clown suits. <laughs> the stranger's remark certainly struck a nerve because the fire breathers were definitely mad. Why you? Let him! The leader barked, as many of them surrounded the stranger, some of them throwing Pokeballs and releasing fire-type Pokemon. Attack! Burn him to a crisp! A wave of intense flames blew forth from the Pokemon and breathers, but the stranger jumped high off the ground and flipped through the air, landing neatly on his feet on top of a sand dune. You attack first, so I will not be held responsible. <laughs> he darted forward and attacked. His fist struck a magmar square in the face, knocking it cleanly off the ground and out cold. He then spun around and kicked a fire breather hard, sending him crashing into a group that was charging at him. You shouldn't have started a fight with me. <laughs> 
the fire breathers and Pokemon standing around him backed off. They were surprised by this young man's strength. Who are you? It's about time you asked. The stranger spoke as his right arm reached for the hood. Grabbing firmly, he threw the cloak off, revealing himself for all to see. Aquamarine of the Super Fiends! Pleased to make your acquaintance! Upon seeing him, a round of gasps filled the area. The Aquamarine? He's just a kid! I thought he'd be at least ten feet tall! These remarks were heard all around. This is perfect! The leader smiled wickedly, still not realizing just who he was going against. Beating you will not only prove that flames are the superior element, but will be famous for defeating one of the notorious super fiends! Go at him! You just don't get it, do you? Hmm! Aquamarine smacked one of them in the face and sent him flying. He darted forward, striking down anyone who came close. Human or Pokemon, it made no difference to him. He was stronger than any of them. He shook his head and sighed, as many fire breathers and Pokemon lay defeated around him. There were still many left, including the leader. If that's all, then I'll be going. I'm a busy man, and I don't have the time to waste on the likes of you. Oh yeah? Looks to me like I'll have to teach you some respect! The leader shouted, throwing a Pokeball. Typhlosion! I choose you! He shouted, releasing the fully evolved fire Pokemon. Hmm, seems I still have to teach you some manners. Aquamarine sighed, reaching for his belt. But instead of a Pokeball, he pulled out an oddly shaped mace-like weapon, made of coral and concealed by his cloak. I'm not even going to waste calling out my Pokemon on a small fry like that. Then burn to death, Super Fiend! Bling roar! The fire breather shouted. Typhlosion roared and fired a blast of flames at Aquamarine. Hmm! Aquamarine skillfully twirled the weapon in his right fingers as the fire came closer. Koro Kajo! He shouted, slamming the weapon to the ground hard causing a layer of sand to splash up and completely erasing the fire. Even if I let it hit me, do you actually believe such a low-level attack can hurt me? He spoke calmly as he began to approach the leader and his Pokemon. Uh, the leader gasped. Typhlosion! Stop him! Was... Typhlosion fell to the ground as Aquamarine slammed the cudgel across his face. There's no one left to fight for you! He spoke in a cold, harsh tone as he glared at him, face to face. Suddenly, his left hand shot forward and grabbed him by the face, gripping him hard. Let me show you just how I deal with rude people. The leader gasped as Aquamarine tightened his grip, lifting him off the ground. His sunglasses cracked and fell. He tried to struggle, but Aquamarine was just too strong. He was going to crush his skull. <laughs> he screamed and passed out. Hmm. Aquamarine released his grip, letting the fire breather fall to the ground. He didn't break his skull, as easy as it would have been to kill him. There was simply no point in killing scum like this. The imprint of his hand was left on the man's face, and by the looks of it, it would stay for a long time. Aquamarine's eyes moved left and right. The remaining fire breathers and Pokemon were all trembling, terrified. You have to the count of ten to run as fast as you can. <coughs> all the fire breathers screamed as they turned around and ran. Black Squall! Aquamarine shouted, sending a swirling, powerful blast of wind and rain that launched all the fire breathers and Pokemon flying high into the sky and thrown over the horizon. Ten, he said simply, and stood there alone. Whew, he sighed, leaning on the coral cudgel. Now that I sent them all the way back to the circus they ran from, sir, can you tell me where is Marble... Sir? He looked around. Mr. Nomad? He called out, and then smacked himself. Oh, damn it! He shouted, remembering that the Black Squall had a huge radius, and he blasted off that nomad along with the circus clowns. Even before he'd got to ask him where Misty, 
and that dead man Ketchum, was going. Aquamarine looked around. The attack had completely blown away all the footprints, rearranged the dunes, and changed the scenery. He had no idea where he was, or which direction was which. He was completely lost now.